This is Redden from Tempest bringing you another operations guide for Star Wars The Old Republic. This time, we'll be going over the third encounter in the Terror from Beyond instance, Operator 9. Before we begin, I'd like to apologize for the lack of complete coverage from multiple perspectives in this fight. Not everyone was able to fraps for this encounter, so I ended up having three videos of three different fights, two of which were from my personal perspective. I'll try to work around this as we go, but please don't be put off by the fact that the footage you're about to see doesn't all fall into one single raid. Let's get into the fight. The Operator 9 encounter is probably one of the best they've released so far. Extremely technical and quite unforgiving, this homage to Tron in the Matrix is a work of pure genius. The fight represents two major phases. We recommend bringing two tanks, two healers, and a balanced mix of ranged and melee DPS. Before you can enter the fight area, you'll need to select your color from a set of four panels in front of the room. Upon clicking a color, you'll be teleported into the room, and you'll have a glow around you that reflects that choice. To explain this fight to the depth that I'd like, I'll first cover the basic mechanics of the encounter and what needs to be done before going into the suggested strategy that we used. In case you'd like to skip the basic explanation of the fight, I'll add an annotation that will allow you to skip ahead to the strategy section. As soon as you get inside, you'll notice that there is a projection of the boss in the middle of the room. This guy can be totally ignored, but we suggest putting him on focus so that you can see his cast bars to know how much time you have left for each color cycle. You'll also notice that there are eight shielded data cores spread around the outskirts of the room, four in the northern section, which is to your left as you enter, and four in the southern section, which is to your right as you enter. We'll refer to these as the northern and southern cores. The idea is that the boss goes into the four color cycles in sequence. When your color is up, one of the players with that color needs to step into the circle at the center of the room. Doing this will activate a panel of the same color on one of the four pillars at the center of the room. The task of the player in the circle is now completed. Beyond this point, all he needs to do is support the cleanup team that's in the middle and help them do damage and interrupt the adds as they spawn. The second player needs to get to their color panel and begin channeling the spell that deactivates the shields on two cores at a time, one on the northern side and one on the southern side of the room. It's up to the rest of the raid to kill these data cores before the boss's channel is completed for that color cycle. This channel can be seen if you set the boss to your focus, as previously suggested, and this channel gets shorter and shorter with each color cycle. You're supposed to split your DPS evenly to handle these data cores while keeping a tank and a healer in the middle to clean up the adds that keep spawning throughout the fight. We call this tank-healer combo the cleanup crew. They won't be DPSing the cores at all for the entire fight. All they need to do is help manage the adds so that they don't hit the channeler. The boss goes through the cycles in the following order every time. Blue, orange, purple, then yellow. The yellow phase is the shortest of them all, and if you fail to kill the cores before the boss's channel ends in any of the color cycles, you'll spawn an additional add called a rectifier. As the boss goes into these cycles, color-coded spheres will spawn in the room in pairs. These need to be killed by the players who carry their same color in order to get an obtuse debuff, which is needed for the data deletion mechanic of phase 2. If these spheres aggro on someone, they will continue to chain stun them until they are killed, so it's smart to kill them as soon as you can. The order in which the shields on the cores are lifted is completely random, but the idea is to kill both cores before the color cycle ends. Doing this will force the boss into the next color cycle, and the entire thing needs to be repeated until all eight cores are dead. This causes phase two to begin. Killing the final data core causes the boss to spawn in the middle of the room. He needs to be tanked and only has three major things that you need to be aware of. The first is simple enough. He cleaves. Just stay away from his frontal cone and you'll be fine. The second is something that he casts that is named Black Obtuse. He doesn't swing at the tank as he's casting this, but eight circles around the boss start to glow in a random color and in a random order, and the boss starts doing damage, which pulses to the raid. The idea is to quickly get to a circle that matches your color, and doing this turns that circle off. You need to get all the circles turned off before he, his cast ends, or suffer some massive AoE raid damage. The final mechanic that needs to be noted is that he will cast a data deletion of a random color on a random raid member. This color choice, as well as the target player's name, 
will be displayed in red text across the screen. The target player will die at the end of the 5 second cast unless someone with that color's deletion obtuse debuff soaks the damage with them. Upon receiving that damage, the obtuse debuff is wiped. This means each player can only save one target. Throughout this phase, recognizer ads will spawn, and they need to be tanked by the off-tanked and DPS down. Now that we've covered the basic mechanics of the fight, let's talk about strategy. Please note that the suggested strategy here is not the only way of doing this encounter. This is merely the easiest and most repeatable way that we found for handling this fight. Assign your color teams as follows. Assign one melee DPS and one ranged DPS to the blue color. Then assign the other melee DPS and the other ranged DPS to the orange color. Assign one tank and one healer to the purple color. And assign the other tank and the other healer to the yellow color. As you pull the boss, you'll notice two adds roaming freely around named defragmenters. These guys are pushovers. Just kill them quickly and get set up for the blue color cycle. Assign the blue range DPS to step into the middle circle and help support the cleanup crew, and assign the blue melee DPS to begin his channel after he kills his blue sphere. Split the two orange DPSers to north and south cores, and give one of them a tank and the other a healer to support their DPS on the cores. You only need one tank and one healer for the cleanup crew, and their only task is to keep the adds off of the channeler as the highest priority. The adds that spawn are named Recognizers, and they spawn with a high preset threat value, which is usually given to the players that are doing the color cycle task. If one of these adds reaches the channeler, his cast is interrupted and you lose valuable DPS time. You should kill these off as quickly as possible, and remember that you'll need taunts to grab their aggro. Note that these adds can be heavily CC'd, so stun, snare, and knock them back if you need to. The ranged blue DPS needs to kill his sphere as soon as he sees the blue melee DPS claim his, so that they can both have the blue obtuse debuff. Upon killing the cores for the blue cycle, the orange cycle comes into play, and the orange DPS team starts their show. At this point, the blue DPS are assigned to separate north and south cores, supported by the same tank and healer setup from the previous cycle. Whenever the orange rage DPS has time, he needs to kill his sphere and claim his obtuse debuff. This is where the cleanup crew meets a new challenge. Up until this point, the only adds that spawned were recognizers that can be CC'd and don't hit very hard. In the orange phase and in the yellow phase only, two additional adds spawn. These are big guys named regulators and they can be quite a pain to deal with. They hit really hard, they have a very large health pool, and the biggest problem is that they cast a spell that needs to be interrupted. This spell is called End of Line, and it will stun the target and knock them back. Stunned tanks can't defend against attacks, so if anyone gets through, if any one of these gets through, it will likely c result in losing that tank, and it'll probably be a wipe. You need to seriously push the DPS on this regulator ad so that it dies close to the second one spawning. The orange range DPS in the center needs to help with the interrupt during this phase, but there are two things that need to be noted about the adds. First, all adds in this fight spawn from the doors that are behind the boss. Second, as soon as the regulator's ad spawns, they will stun a random raid member, usually the range DPS in the middle. It is suggested that you save your CC break for when the second one spawns, as that's a more critical time for, in for interrupting and doing damage. Just eat the first stun and break the second stun so that you can support the cleanup crew. As discussed in the mechanics section, if you fail to meet the DPS requirements set by the boss for each cycle, a third type of add spawns called a rectifier. These hit about as hard as the regulators and have a little more health than them, but they don't need to be interrupted at all. They're a DPS sink more than anything else. When the orange phase is finished, the purple phase begins and luckily no regulators spawn here, just the usual recognizers. At this point, all four of the DPS in your eight-man group have done their color cycles and are now free to DPS the data cores. This is a good thing, since the purple phase is the second shortest after yellow. Now, one of your tank heal teams has the purple color. The purple tank finds and kills his purple sphere, while the purple healer stands in the circle and supports, the heal supports healing the raid with the new cleanup crew, which is now made up of the tank healer team, which is colored yellow. The purple tank begins his channel, and the DPS are assigned to kill the cores, two to the northern core and two to the southern core. 
The purple healer needs to kill his purple sphere after the purple tank claims his kill, making sure that both of them have the purple obtuse debuff. When this phase ends, the final cycle begins. The yellow phase is the tightest in terms of DPS time, and what's horrible is that it spawns regulator ads just like orange. Here's where our strategy really comes into play. We notice that we can force a rectifier ad to spawn, and that there would be no negative consequences to doing that. So, while the yellow tank and the yellow healer are doing their color cycle task of killing the spheres, and in the case of the yellow tank channeling into the pillar, and in the case of the yellow healer supporting the purple cleanup crew, only two of the four DPS go to kill the core on the northern side. While they kill that, the two remaining DPS stay in the middle and support the cleanup crew, helping them deal damage to the regulators as they spawn and interrupting them as needed. This results in killing one of the two data cores during yellow, which technically means that we failed to meet the DPS requirement, and it means that we're now going to have to deal with a rectifier ad, which will now spawn. We quickly dispatch this when we have two DPS in the middle supporting the cleanup crew. The strike force of DPS that has killed one of the cores now moves to the opposite side and proceeds to kill that one as well. Now, after the rectifier spawns, a new wave of regulator adds will be spawned, and we deal with these regularly by DPSing and interrupting them, but we delay the death of the final core until all adds are cleared up so that we don't have to deal with the adds and the boss at the same time. Killing the final core will induce the boss to spawn in the middle of the room for phase 2. Phase 2 is the easier part of the fight. Assign one tank to tank the boss, and the other tank to off-tank the adds as they spawn. When the Black Obtuse cast begins, everyone needs to get to their color circles in a timely manner. The biggest challenge here is coordination. Each of those circles needs to be stepped into in order to turn it off before the cast finishes. Remember that he sometimes likes to drop aggro after the Obtuse cast, so be ready with your single target taunts. Aside from the adds and the Black Obtuse and the Cleave, the data deletion needs to be handled. As I said earlier, this will be indicated by red text that will read the boss casts blue deletion protocol on Redden, for example. This means that one of the guys that killed blue spheres in phase 1 needs to come and stand on the target player, which is in this example, Redden, to soak that damage before the 5 second cast ends. After you've soaked it once, you can't soak it again as the obtuse debuff is dispelled from you. The best way that we've found to handle this is to assign who's going first for each color team. So if I shared the, pl the purple color with a healer, I'd basically say that I'll take the first soak for the first purple deletion, and ask the purple healer to soak the second one if it comes up. That's it for this fight guys. It's a super technical fight that merits a lot of attention and a lot of work, so try to enjoy your time learning the encounter. If you liked this content or found it useful, please remember to hit the like button, for more boss strategies, kill videos, class guides, and more, please remember to subscribe to our channel and check us out at our website. Thanks.